This is alu pie I made over the weekend for my daughter and her sweet mates at college. But we're not making alu pies today. I'll leave the link to this below. It's another very popular recipe. Today we're making fish pies. While I'm preparing my monthly batch of green seasoning to season the fish with before frying, I'll tell you a little story. My dad owned a fishing vessel and when his workers came in every morning, he would bring home the best catch of the day, the freshest fish, the most colossal shrimp I've ever seen to date. And one day he told me, he said, after I had complained for the hundredth time about eating fish, he said, one day when you grow up, you're not going to have this fresh fish, so enjoy it while you can. And boy, was he right. Nowadays, I travel far and wide to source the freshest fish possible and to no avail. It's really difficult to get good fish nowadays. Daddy, wherever you are, you were right. I wish I had enjoyed more fish and shrimp when I was younger. Now back to the green seasoning. I've placed all the herbs along with a little piece of ginger, garlic, in the food processor and I am blending it until it's a smooth paste and not chunky and not too fine. And then I'll place it in a bottle and I'll use it as required during the week, during the entire month. If, I, if it finishes, then I'll make some more. If you want a specific recipe for green seasoning or want to learn more about the green gold, Caribbean green seasoning, I'll leave the link below and above so you can watch that at your leisure. It's really a necessity in Caribbean cooking. It adds flavor and deliciousness to all your meals and it even makes cooking much simpler and easier. And now that's done, let's start cooking. And today I'm gonna to teach you to make an amazing fish pie inspired by the fish pies my mom and dad brought home on Saturday mornings from the bay, Orange Valley Bay, where they sold their fresh catch every morning. Next I'm going to prepare a simpler seasoning for the filling. Using only bandanya, also known as culancho, another popular herb in the Caribbean, hot peppers and garlic. This seasoning can replace the one we made previously if you wanted to keep things a little simpler. I'm not using the first seasoning that I made because it's more complex, contains more ingredients and I don't want to overpower the delicate taste of the fish. Place these seasonings in the refrigerator until we're ready to use it. Today I'm using about two pounds of fish, a combination of catfish fillet and red snapper fillet, just to show you the flexibility of using any type of firm fish. The first thing we're going to do is to rinse the fish with cold water and do so gently because you don't want to break up the fish. You can also use a whole fish, but that involves a lot of extra work to remove the flesh of the fish from the bones after frying. So I found this to be much easier. Next, I'll season the fish with about two tablespoons of green seasoning per pound to start with, with pink Himalayan salt to taste according to your taste. I think I added about one teaspoon here and maybe a little more later on. About a half teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper went in next. I also added a couple of tablespoons of the Culancho Bandanya seasoning because it contained a little more garlic and hot peppers which I thought would give it another extra layer of flavor. We'll finish off with a deep tissue massage and then we'll place it in a resealable bag and place it in the refrigerator overnight. I also added a tablespoon or two of extra virgin olive oil to help the green seasoning penetrate to the meat and help it disperse evenly. In place of the green seasoning or in addition to the green seasoning, you can add your favorite all-purpose seasoning. But there is nothing like fresh seasoning. I'm also kneading the dough a day in advance. In a large bowl, I've added about three cups of all-purpose unbleached flour one tablespoon of aluminum-free baking powder, one teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt, and I'll also add one tablespoon of brown sugar. These products are just my preference. Use whatever is available to you. We'll mix it well to combine. Make sure it's evenly incorporated. The claw, just mix it around about 10 times. To make it a softer dough, I'll add two tablespoons of butter, and this is optional. You can add butter, oil, or nothing at all. And I'll rub it in.
Once you're confident that it's evenly incorporated, we can start adding the water gradually. We make a well in the center. We'll add some water, and this is lukewarm. Let's pin. Or spin technique. Move it to the side. Keep working on the dry dough, the dry flour. Back and forth motion. Keep doing that. You could work as quickly or as slowly as you like. Whatever is comfortable for you. you even put this in the stand mixer. And there'll be no work at all but I know many of you don't have a stand mixer so I'll leave it by hand just to show you roll it around this is a roll it around technique if the dough is soft it's not dry and we don't want to over knead it it's kind of wet which is good Wet is always better than dry. The knuckle press method. This smoothen the dough, but it's wet, so it's not gonna get smooth. But I'll show you how we fix this in just a moment. So we'll sprinkle on a little bit of flour. That's about a teaspoon of flour. Make sure the sides of my bowl is clean. A little sprinkle on. You're bringing it to the center. To the center it's not very difficult if it's sticking you just add just a sprinkle of flour and you bring it to the center we're almost done now i'm going to dip my knuckles in the flour and knuckle press to smoothen the dough the sand mixer will do all of this for you Knuckle press to smoothen the dough. Bring it to the center. Still a bit sticky. We're only adding, we're only adding a sprinkle of flour. Bringing it to the middle. We're gonna do this for two or three minutes. To the middle. The dough is really soft and supple. Feels really nice. Feels light. And as you will see in the final product, we really don't need any yeast to make this soft. Clean the sides of your bowl. One more time. And that's it. You have a really soft dough. And you press it, see? It springs back. When we press it later on after it's rested, the dent will stay and it won't spring back and that's how we'll know it's ready. I'm going to brush this with oil and allow it to sit for a minimum of one hour. I'm adding some butter instead of the oil because I have the butter here already. I'm going to do both sides so that it doesn't form a crust. And that's it. We're done. The fish has been marinating for about a day and we've brought it to room temperature and now we'll get it ready for frying. And we're frying the fish outside because we don't want to mess our stove up inside. And also because it's a beautiful day and everything is more fun when done in the outdoors. My husband is assisting once again because he does not trust himself behind my camera, nor do I. So please be patient with his skills at this point. This might be the first time he's flowering fish for frying. With cooking with Ria, you're never too old or it's never too late to learn.
We'll dust off the excess flour and we'll place it in the hot oil and fry for about 3 to 4 minutes per side or until light golden brown. Please place the fish gently in the pot to prevent splashing of the hot oil. If you're using a more tender fish fillet, you can pan sear or steam the fish in very little oil. No flour required. That is how I got burned. Important to note my friends, I like keeping the skin on where there's skin on the fillet so that it will help to hold the fish together. This one is a red snapper. We've already fried the catfish. We're using large fillets like this, it fries quicker, more quickly, less work. It only takes about three to four minutes per side on medium low heat. And that's it, fried red snapper. Be very careful when removing it from the pot. On to the next step as soon as this cools. You can surely enjoy this as is with fried bake, sada roti or dal and rice. Next we'll prep the filling for the fish and for this you'll need very simple ingredients. Here I'm chopping up a couple of scallions. I'll also finally chop some hot pepper which is optional, onion and garlic. Now that the fish is cool enough to handle, we'll break it up into small pieces or flake it. And this might be very difficult to do so just with your hands. You can use a chopper and chop it up into small pieces on a chopping board. Or next you'll see I'm going to place it in my food processor and pulse it until it becomes smaller pieces. Not necessarily into a paste. It's not a paste, it's still a bit chunky, so you will have texture. And now we'll add the seasonings. I'll add a couple of tablespoons of the bandanya seasoning along with salt and black pepper. And use as much seasoning as you'd like, or as little. We'll massage the seasonings in to distribute the flavor. Also added salt and black pepper. Give it a taste and adjust the seasonings. Let's move on to the very last step of filling and frying the dough and you'll need the kneaded dough, oil, vegetable oil, plain flour and your delicious fish filling. Fill a frying pan with 2-3 to three cups of oil and place it over low heat. If you think the next step is going to take very long for you, you can do this later on. I'll divide the dough into 3 pieces and then divide each into 4 for a total of 12 pieces of dough. We'll bring the size of the dough to meet at the top. We're pinching to the top. Squeeze and rotate. Squeezing and spinning. That's it. Let me show you how I fill the dough. If you have an easier way of doing it, do leave a comment below. You'll press the circumference of the dough to flatten into a disc. Use your hands or rolling pin. Using a rolling pin, roll it out into a, maybe a six inch round or five inch round. Not too wide. We'll grab a little bit. You can use a spoon to measure. About three tablespoons, squeeze it together. This filling is what we also refer to as fish choka and can be eaten with sada roti. And put it on the middle. Put a little more if you feel capable. 
Next, we'll bring it to meet at the top, meet at the sides, and meet at the side. This is the easiest way I have found. And then you pinch around, pinch, squeeze, so that it doesn't break during the cooking process. And I like folding a bit to seal it in there even tighter with no chance of uh, breaking or for the filling to leak out. So now it's nicely wrapped in there. I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my counter and I'm going to flatten. I'm just flattening it to make sure that the filling is evenly distributed inside the dough. And that's it, that's one. I'm going to pull in opposite directions to elongate. You have number one. I'm going to put it on a tray and I'll repeat with the remaining dough. If you want it smaller, just divide each loya into six or five. And this is a good size for us. I'll just oil this tray. Hopefully the oil will work. I don't want to add any more uh, flour because it can dirty the oil during frying. We'll repeat with the next. I'll just show you this two or three times. You press with your thumb around the circumference of the disc and you spin to flatten. What you're trying to do is to make it flat and even. And pressing, pushing towards the outside. If it's springing back, it means that your dough needs a little more resting. See, I'm pushing it and it's coming back. This dough is really not ready, but because we're pressed for time, I'm going to continue and force the dough, which is not a good thing. Forcing the dough is not a good thing, mainly because it makes your job even more difficult. So use a rolling pin. You don't need a mini rolling pin. Use whatever you have. Because of my lack of space, I'm using this. I'm doing this to relax the dough, to stretch it and get it ready for the filling. All right, that should be good. That is about five and a half inches. So circle, grab and squeeze. Grab and squeeze. This should be about three tablespoons and we'll come over back to the dough. I'm gonna place it in the middle. I'm going to wipe my hands. Now it's in the middle. I'm gonna bring it up to the top to meet in the center and the edges here and then I'll squeeze. Next I'm going to Roll, just twisting the dough, pull up and over and twist. Because if that breaks during cooking, it's going to dirty your oil. Press to flatten. It's a little sticky. It could break here, so you add a little bit of flour. And then you pull to lengthen. And that's it, number two. I'm going to repeat with the remainder and then we'll fry. I like pressing them out, saves time. I'm going to get some fish, press and put it in the center. This way I dirty my hand once every six pies. Press in place and we've been very generous with the filling and pressing the filling and placing it on it's going to be a little messy 
It is a little messy process, but remember we have to move very quickly as we have the oil heating up and we also have the wrapped dough sitting, which will tend to get more soft over time and we don't want it to become too unmanageable. Mm. We'll place a small piece of dough in the oil and once it browns we know the oil is ready. Then we'll place the first pie in the hot oil. We'll pour the oil over the dough to allow it to cook more quickly and evenly. I'm raising the heat to medium low. It was at low because it has been um, on the stove for quite a while heating. But we can raise the heat here now. And we're raising it to level three. That's between medium and low. As you see, there's not much bubbling action happening here. That's just an indication that you need to raise the heat. If it's not the right temperature, the dough will absorb a lot of oil and it will be very oily. Nobody wants an oily pie. You can cook this a little darker. Yes, swelling nicely, which is, a, which is a good indication as well that everything is steaming and the dough will not be raw in the center. If it cooks too quickly, the dough will be raw. So just be a little patient and cook it thoroughly. It's singing in the pot, which means that the steam is escaping from the center. I'm just going to turn it or tilt it to the side to allow that side to cook evenly as well. This here is a little light, so I'm going to flip it and cook it a little more. You don't want your pie too light and you don't want your pie too dark. If you cook it too dark, it might become stiff. Nobody wants a stiff pie. You want it tasty, soft, and delicious. I'm going to drain the excess oil at the side of the pot here. I have to hold it very firmly to ensure that it doesn't fall back to the oil and splash. I've gotten burned like that on many occasions. We have to have good control over the pie at this stage. I'm going to put my finger to hold it. But you don't have to use a finger. Your finger, use a fork. It's nicely drained. It looks lovely. It's puffed up, fully cooked, and I'll place it on a lined tray. We'll remove the second one and repeat with the remaining dough. Because we now have three in the pot, we need to raise the heat a little higher to medium high. Because the quantity has decreased the temperature of the oil. So I will flip. It's very difficult being in 
behind the camera and flipping at the same time. These were resting a couple of minutes, that's why they're puffing up like this. If you fry them as soon as you wrap them, they won't swell as much. The dough has rested so it's more relaxed and it's puffing up much larger. It's also a testament to how good the dough is. We kneaded it soft, we added the right amount of baking powder to allow it to puff up nicely. And as you can see, this dough, we did not twist it. Well, I did not twist it properly, so filling can fall out of here, which is why it's very important to fill, to twist it properly, to seal it properly. Okay, these are much darker than the first set. Nothing's wrong with that. I will not flip this again to ensure that we don't dirty that oil. We don't want any spillage. I'm gonna just tilt it to the side so that the bottom can cook or brown nicely. And get ready to take this out. Remember when, when you're removing pies from the pot, it's very important that you have full control, that it does not fall back down into the oil because it can splash and burn you. These are soft, lovely, absolutely beautiful and wait till you taste it. It's best eaten warm or straight out of the pot. And that's all there is it, my sweet friends. I know you, your family, and your friends will absolutely enjoy it. It's a must try. I hope you've enjoyed being in the kitchen with me and learned something new. I know this was a bit long today, so thank you for your patience. Please let me know below if you plan to give this a try or if you try this recipe, please leave your feedback. Kindly like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment below. I love hearing from you. Until next time, stay safe. Be well, cook, share and love. Bye bye.